All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. We're going to define vectors and see what we mean by velocity vectors and acceleration vectors. So let's read this together. Unlike speed, which is only magnitude, example 10 meters per second, velocity is both magnitude and direction. So for example, 10 meters per second east. This here is the magnitude part and this here is the direction part. So the quantity that has both magnitude and direction is called a vector. Vectors are shown using arrows and the blank of the arrow shows the magnitude length. So let's take a look at the ball rolling down the ramp again. We can see that we have some vectors drawn here. These are the velocity these are the velocity vectors. So this is showing a velocity of two meters per second. So this is the same as the ramp that we used a couple of nights ago. Here the initial velocity was zero, starting from rest. And after each second, it's going two meters per second faster. Okay, so notice two things. The ball is rolling down the ramp, so these vectors are all pointed down the ramp, and the vector is growing longer, indicating that it's getting faster. And the length is, the length is proportional, so this vector for 8 meters per second is going to be twice as long as this vector over here for 4 meters per second. We can add vectors, <clears throat> and here's an example. If this is our initial velocity vector and it's changing to become a longer vector, so this part here, the change in velocity, this change in velocity part added to this initial vector gives us a final vector which is longer. So we could say that this length for vi plus this length for the change in v gives us this new longer length for greater velocity. Um, this uh, change in v, delta v, is acceleration. Acceleration is change in velocity. So we can think of this little vector here as an acceleration vector, which is equal to the change in velocity going from vi to vf. And so down here we're showing it with uh, symbols, vi plus change in v equals vf, v final. All right, so what we can do here is we can actually draw other vectors here that are all pointing down and this here these little vectors are all representing the change in velocity notice how the velocity keeps growing by two meters per second every second so this acceleration is showing how much the velocity is growing by so we can put in values for each of these two meters per second And okay, now let's take a look at the example of the ball rolling up the ramp. So let's imagine a situation where we want this ramp to have some initial velocity, v0. And the velocity is going to be changing. It's going to be going a little slower up here, one second later, a little slower here, one second later, a little slower here, and finally it's going to end up at the top. If we wanted it to come to rest at the top and stay there, well, not stay there, but just come to rest at the top for even just a split instant of time, what velocity initially would we have to give it down here? Well, it's the same ramp. And just as the ball was accelerating, getting faster by two meters per second every second on the way down, it's going to be getting slower by two meters per second every second on the way up. So if we count how many we have here, how many seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, we would need it to start with 
eight meters per second at the bottom. So one second later, it would be going six meters per second. One second later, four meters per second. One second later, two meters per second. And finally, come to rest, even if only for a split momentary second before it begins to roll back down. So we can finish drawing these vectors. They should be getting shorter, each one, since the speed is getting lesser. And then finally, at the top, no, no vector at rest. So um, going to this idea of the change in the velocity, the initial velocity in this case is greater than the final velocity because it's getting slower. This delta v again represents the acceleration. This part right here, this is the change in the velocity, which is acceleration. So notice how this initial velocity plus this change in velocity or acceleration are pointed in opposite directions. That indicates that this ball is going to be getting slower. Whereas if you go further up to the top where we were before, this initial velocity vector is pointed in the same direction as the change in velocity or acceleration vector, indicating that the velocity is getting greater. So let's go back down to this here. This would be a good time to define positive and negatives here. So we could say that anything going up the ramp is negative direction, and anything going down the ramp is positive direction. So if the initial velocity is positive and there's no acceleration, what does that mean? If it's a positive direction, positive here, it means it's going um, let's say down the ramp or in this case let's say um, to the right. So I'm actually going to draw, draw a direction here. Because the acceleration is zero, we can say that there is no change in speed. And similarly, if it's a negative velocity here, then we know it's going the opposite way. We can get rid of this word right since we're showing it with the with the vector. Um, and this zero acceleration again means that there is no change to speed. What about in the case where an object is moving in the positive direction and it's experiencing positive acceleration? It's going to be moving to the right because the fact that this is positive and if the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity, it means the velocity is growing in that direction, so it's getting faster. Its speed is increasing. So the two of these taken together indicate increasing. The next one down, we have something moving in the positive direction but experiencing a negative acceleration. That means that the velocity is changing more in the negative direction. So it's still going positive direction, and that's indicated by this positive. But because of the negative acceleration and the positive velocity, we can say that the speed is decreasing. So let's take a look at these two examples over here on the right. Over here on the right, object moving to the right, positive velocity, if it's also experiencing positive acceleration, then we know that this velocity is getting faster. It's getting faster to the right. If the object is moving to the right, but it's experiencing an um, acceleration to the left, then we can say that it's getting slower. So um, going down to this table here, the acceleration, I mean, if the object is moving to the left in the negative direction, but the acceleration is positive, the combination of these two are indicating that the speed is also going to be decreasing. And the last example here, object moving to the left, so 
that the moving to the left with a um, acceleration to the left also means it's getting faster in the left direction. So this would be increasing speed. So what's the main point that we can get out of this? The question I asked you on the bottom, what does the acceleration vector tell you about the direction the object is moving? The answer is nothing. Only the velocity vector tells you direction. So what does the acceleration vector tell you? The acceleration vector tells you how the velocity is changing. So an object could be moving to the right, but its velocity could be changing to be more toward the left. So first it's going to be getting slower to the right until it comes to a stop, and then it will actually begin to move to the left. Okay, so we're going to discuss this more in class because this is not a simple concept, but it is really important because what is causing all these accelerations? It is force. And the direction of the force acting on the object determines the acceleration of the object. So acceleration is not what causes the object to change speed or change velocity. It is the object changing velocity. And why that happens is because of force. Okay, thanks for tuning in. See you in class.